Now, anyone can shoot fireworks. You can set up your tripod and shoot bulb mode, and you're off and running. But what I want to do is offer some advanced techniques for really creating the coolest fireworks shots you can imagine. And we'll use these shots from the Houston Fireworks on the 4th, and I love this location on the bayou just west of downtown Houston along the Allen Parkway. And as we can see from these images, we've got great shots of fireworks, but the foreground, meaning the Houston skyline, is kind of dark and not really prevalent in the image. And what we want to do is show you how to balance these exposures so you'll get a really, really good image. In other words, we can take this particular image and superimpose it with these kinds of really nice firework shots to give you a nice completed image. So let's go ahead and load some of these firework shots in Photoshop and I'll show you how to combine the fireworks and the foreground elements for a really, really nice image. All right, we're in Photoshop now and what we have loaded is a bunch of firework shots as well as this foreground element. We only have one and what we're going to do is take this fireworks and this one and maybe this one and I've got a bunch more and you can even use fireworks from a completely different show to bring into this area. Now if I go back to the foreground image and I say yes, I'm going to place some fireworks in the sky right above here First thing you're going to say is, you're cheating! And yeah, technically I guess I am, but in actuality, if you look again, that is exactly where the fireworks were being displayed. But only thing I'm trying to do is correct the exposure differential between what is required for the fireworks and for the foreground. So yes indeed, the fireworks did indeed display in that location. All right, so we're going to begin by moving some things around. I'm going to keep this image, and let me get rid of that crop tool framing there. I'm going to take this one, and I definitely want to use this shot, so I'm going to bring this image off the dock, and I'm going to place the cursor inside the floating image, hold down the Shift key, left click, drag it over, and plop it in. Now you'll notice that there is no alignment in the foreground between here and here. Don't worry about that. We're not going to use any of this foreground. The only thing we're going to do is use this fireworks display. And we're going to do another one. Let's take this one. Same thing. Create the floating image. Hold down the shift key. Left click. Drag it over and plop it in. And again, the foregrounds don't align. That's okay. Let's see. I want to get this one right here. Uh, that was taken at the golf course that I live on in Texas, and the clubhouse had a little fireworks display. Nothing on the scale of the Houston fireworks, but it was still nice, and we got some uh, good results. So we're going to use this fireworks as well. All right, so we're going to put this one over here, hold down the shift key, drag it in, plop it in, and let's get rid of some of these that we're not going to use. I don't think we're going to use this one. Get rid of this one. There we go. Now we got it all straight. Now we got them sequenced. Now if you look at the layer stack, let me reposition Photoshop here. If you look at the layer stack, one, two, three, and then at the bottom we have the background layer, which is our foreground element. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the background, Command or Control J. And let's go ahead and take this first one, and I'll cancel the visibility on the top two. We'll go to 100% magnification on this, I think. Might have to bring it in just a little bit, and we're going to go get the lasso tool, and we're going to come in, and we're going to come around like this. And I know that's weird to go up, up in here like this, but you'll understand why I'm doing that once we complete the process. You want to hug this illuminated fireworks display as closely as you can and go like that and so now we have a selection and then I'm going to hit command J to put that selection on its own layer. Now we're going to disconnect the previous layer and I think you can now kind of see what we're going to do but the question in your mind is probably how in the world are you going to blend this in? Well let's figure out where we want to put it first of all. Let's put it uh, let's say right here. Now let's talk about this foreground for just a minute. I like the fact that the people are sitting here, standing over here, 
And when I chose this spot to shoot the fireworks, I thought, man, this place is going to be packed to the gills. I better get here early. So I did. I got there about 6, 6.30, and <laughs> when the show started, there was hardly anybody there. So I guess it's one of the best-kept secrets in Houston in terms of uh, spots to view the fireworks. For those of you who understand Houston, this is in the bayou just west of downtown along the Allen Parkway, and that's about as much as I'm going to give you. <laughs> So let's go ahead now and see how we're going to blend in this particular firework. And it's very easy, actually. We come over to the layer, double click, and then the blend if slider right here. We start on the dark area and we move to the right. And presto changeo. Look at that. Now you'll say, yeah, that doesn't look quite balanced from illumination standpoint and you're right and we're going to correct that so just hang on to your hat let's go ahead and say okay to that let's go to the next one and I'm going to temporarily disconnect that and one more time I'm going to come up and get the lasso tool I'm going to come around like this and I don't want that outside part I don't think that's going to blend really well let's just take what we have right here may change my mind, but let's take a look and see how this is going to work. Command or Control J to put the selection on its own layer. I'm going to disconnect the source layer. And then we're going to reposition. Let's go ahead and put this one right here. See how it meshes together. Let's move it over just a little, like right there. And then again, double click on the selection. Go get the blend if slider, come in like this, and look at that. Is that cool or what? Go ahead and hit OK. And then, of course, by the fact that the selection is on its own layer, we can reposition it to wherever we want. And I think right up here is going to be probably the best. Now, we're going to do the same thing again. Let's go get this image. Go get the lasso tool. And I'm going to come in. Just like this. I gotta be careful along the roof line of the clubhouse of the golf course. Very small fireworks display, lasted about a half an hour. All the neighbors kind of pulling in their golf carts and how you doing? Everybody knew each other. And it was just nice to get out of the house for about a half an hour on the Saturday night before July 4th. And now we've got our selection. Again, we'll put it on its own layer. Disconnect the source layer. Now this time we're going to do something a little different. We're going to reduce the size of this selection. Let's go down to Transform and Scale. And then I'm going to bring this down like that. Really kind of small. And put it right there. Now let's bring back this one. And this one, let's go get the move tool and let's see where we want to put it. How about right there? Might even make it a little smaller. Come up to image, rather edit, transform, and scale. And let's make it a little smaller. Put it like right there. I've got to mix it in, stick it in there, just like that. Now we're going to do the same thing again. Double click on the selection layer, get the blend if slider, bring it in, and go like that. Hit OK. We'll come up, maybe move this up here. And it's just a matter of uh, personal taste as to where you want it to be. Right there, how's that, how's that look? It looks okay. Now the one thing I'm glad that we don't have is that smoke. You know, anytime you have fireworks, you've got this after smoke that kind of drifts into the image, and I'm glad we don't have that to deal with. So how are we going to balance the luminosity? It just looks weird. The, the, the foreground is so bright, and we've got fireworks up there. Something just doesn't look right about it, and indeed it doesn't. So let's come down to the background. And I'm going to make another copy. We already had two. I'm going to make a third one. And we're going to take this background layer, come up and get Image, Adjustments, 
and just take the curves dialog box. We're going to grab the middle and we're just going to bring down the luminosity. It was just a little too bright. Now it looks better. Don't you think that looks much, much better? We can still see the Houston skyline. We know it's Houston. We know what we're looking at here. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm actually going to refine this super foreground. Let's go ahead and put a mask on this layer right here. Go get the brush. And our flow is 8%, which is what we want. I just want to bring out the presence of this bike path right here. And maybe this grass. Houston has a grassy knoll too, just like Dallas. And we'll just blend this in just to kind of give the super foreground a little more presence. Those of you who live in Houston along the Allen Parkway with Memorial Park, you probably recognize this location. And if you didn't go to watch the fireworks here, now you know. Dab this in just a bit, bring it in. Maybe a few of the trees. Now what we can also do is rearrange the stacking order. And I think what I want to do is this firework right here. I want to bring it under this one. There you go. I think that's better. And then the little one that we superimposed from the other fireworks show on the golf course. Where do we want to put that? How about right there? There. I think that looks a little bit better. So now we've got a completed image. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. Discard hidden layers. Yes, we don't need the full view there. In fact, after looking at it, I think it could stand, that sky could stand to be a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and make that foreground just a little bit darker. Let's go ahead and choose the image. Come up here to Image, Adjustments, Curves, and let's bring it down a little more. Not much. Just about like that. I think we will have it right there. And that is a finished image. And that's how to build a really, really nice fireworks shot in Photoshop. Now, what we haven't talked about is the shooting technique to get this. Now, the best camera settings for getting fireworks is going to be a function of how far away you are from the actual fireworks. But generally speaking, I'm at 100 ISO to 200 ISO and I'm fully open. In other words, if you've got a 2.8 open to 2.8, I'm shooting with a 4.5. So I open 4.5 and I shoot fully open. Shutter speed is bulb. You're going to put a cable release on your camera. You're going to just open the shutter when a stream goes up. In other words, when you see that rocket go up, you know at some point it's going to explode and give you a display. So you open it, wait for the display. When it concludes, you close it. Then open it again, wait for the next one. And you just stand there during the entire show you're not chimping at all, because if you start chimping, you're going to lose some really, really great shots. I mean, I've lost great firework shots by chimping, so I quit doing it. So you just get the cable release when you see a firework going up, wait for it to explode. You just repeat the process during the entire show. And then when you get home, you start looking at your work, you're going to be amazed. Nothing looks like the way you thought it would, <laughs> for better and worse sometimes. So there you have it, advanced techniques for processing and shooting fireworks in Photoshop.